Hi, friends. December favorites. It's as if all I've been putting out are like best stuff favorite videos, but I think after this one we can get back to our regularly scheduled programming, which will be less new stuff and more about what I already have. Very excited about December favorites because this was a great month. It ended fantastically when I met Pat McGrath for the first time in person. I go at length about the whole thing in my Star Wars video, and man, what a pleasure it was to meet mother damn senpai pat mcgrath also a part of the i guess controversy was the limited edition star wars eyeshadow palette was a uh, sticker fied it was a pretty nice looking sticker it fooled me but people i think were half and half about how they were upset about it how they were like okay i mean how what what else was it going to be so it was an interesting conversation but i wanted to bring that up because the first item of my favorites. And yes, although I attended the Star Wars event and met Pat McGrath herself, I have been using the heck out of these quints. I have all three. Divine Droid finally arrived. Yay, yay, yay. I have a YouTube short showcasing Divine Droid. So I was pleasantly surprised by these quints. Although it's not the most luxurious packaging, I think consistent with what we've seen, a uh, lower price range items from the Pat McGrath Labs brand, like what we've seen from her holiday collections and other mini releases with the cardboard packaging. You basically just have the sticker of the character on top of the palette and the rest is this foiled blue. These are fantastic and if I had to pick a favorite, and I'm such a sip for this, the golden one took me by the neck. I did not realize how much I would use this palette. It's this one here. Tatooine. <laughs> Tatooine is the go-to ultimate matte for me. Through the crease, on the lid, all over. Just the perfect amount of smoke ratio so that it can look hazy and like, ooh, during the day, but not like disco. Disco is fine during the day for those who are into that, but I like the level of depth that Tatooine brings. And Cyborg Relations, this metallic bronze. We've seen this color before. I just love the tone of it. And in addition to these quints, which I feel because of the smaller packaging, the accessibility when doing your makeup, you could hop from one to the other, not as easily done with the bigger Mothership palette. So that is one advantage. I definitely recognize when using the quince. The Chromalux pots, bam, using these nonstop. When I first dipped into Falcon Noir, the charcoal gunmetal shade, it was like this world unleashed savagely. I layer them under each other, layer them under the different quints. Today I have on Rouge Rebellion, look at this, look at this. I applied Mustafar heat on top and also, let me get this right, Imperial on the inner corner and a little bit of Galactic Con- Look at that, look at that. Buffed out Rouge Rebellion and of course went in with Tatooine just to finish the edges. I adored how this came out. Look at it. So perhaps this collection left a bad taste in people's mouth because of, again, the, the sticker reveal. But if I were to take all emotion out of this, right, if Midnight Sun wasn't even in the collection and we just had these quints and pots, I think they're fantastic. And the fact, again, that they're smaller, lighter, easier to travel with, I brought this along with me with extra galactic gold. Do I have it with me? Where is it? I think extra galactic gold took me by surprise because I thought it was going to be more antique but when I saw the swatch online it leaned more yellow but even still I just love the the tone of it it's, it's like a rich looking gold in regards to the formula super smooth when you apply it but because of the emolliency if you do apply this on bare lid it will wear quickly right if you want more longevity definitely slap on your favorite primer i slap on my linda halberg primer and it helps the chromalux formula stay on longer especially if you layer shadow on top so let the fam know down below what your experience has been 
with the longevity factor in regards to the Chromalux pods, what primer you use and what you have found the most success with. Also a big shout out to Linda Halber Cosmetics for not only sending me their Duo Dimension Blush Duo, but also sending me their basic elements eye shadow palette this could be a fantastic supplemental palette in that you can choose any of these shades right look how beautifully shiny these are they're lightweight easy to apply i could have applied gold on the inner corner and based on the palette name itself basic elements these colors are the different element names but you have lh here which i think is very clever it's the the brand name this color here you have ag silver au gold and cu copper can go wrong with these shades. I have a YouTube short showcasing this palette as well. Falcon Noir under LH. Belinda Halberg has her crayons, which so many options there, especially I think not this year, but several years back, she released like the more grungy colors in the crayon formula. Those are fantastic. So you can draw on your lid to create that more metal base, apply these on top and mwah. So a huge thank you to, again, Linda Halberg Cosmetics for sending the basic elements. Not only that, she also sent me the bomb, but oh my gosh, where is it? I'll make sure to do a short of that or perhaps I'll show a swatch somewhere. But again, grateful to have received these items. And I enjoy LH Cosmetics just for uh, the diversity in the products and also the diversity in their uses, right? The brand heavily emphasizes that you don't have to just tie an eye product with eyes or blush to face. You can use blush on eyes. The crayons can be used on any part of your face, brows, eyes, lips, face, wherever. So the Infinity palettes are the face powder palettes that you could use anywhere on your face as well. So the, the breadth of possibility with which you can use these products on through technique wise, I think is a great opportunity for a user just to play a little bit. And I think that's what Linda encourages as well. Also, this is not an official favor, but I had meant to show this. I think I received my Hobonichi Techo package sometime in October or November, but the hype was the fact that Hobonichi Techo collabed with One Piece. When I saw this, I died and I was devastated when I missed the pre-sale and I was so worried because they stopped the pre-sale and then they were like, listen, we're gonna release the rest of stock on this day. I had all the alarms on. I was not gonna miss it because not only were they selling the limited edition Hobonichi Tetro covers, but the act, hold on. But the actual Hobonichi planner was one piece. So this is, I bought two. I'm not gonna open this. This is collectors, okay? I already opened the one that I am currently using and I just love the design. Here's Luffy with his beloved straw hat and the entire crew, Mugiwara. You have it in red in this rough sketch design and inside you have different sleeves where you could place anything on. But what's unique is that you have different phrases from both the anime and the manga. So you'll turn and you'll have like a manga panel here throughout the book and I just think, I just love it so much. That was the A6 size. You also have the A5 size. Uh, Luffy still on the cover, another sketch design. You have the uh, Jolly Roger here on the back in the blue. So I have the day free, which gives a little more freedom to the user where you still have the calendar here on the front for all year, but then you can date the pages however you want. They're undated, basically use it for journaling, planning, scheduling, whatever you want. The possibilities are endless. I also have, <laughs> I think these are the Mega. You have the Sunny on one and you have, you got little Mary in the clouds. Mary and Zeus, they put Zeus on here, oh my gosh. Also, there was a limited edition leather cover Look at the dust cover, oh my gosh. But what's so special about this is that you have Mary here on the front. I have it in the A5 too. And when you open it up, you have the map of the Grand Line. It, you know, 
I don't care if I never use this. I just had to have it because it is collectors for me. I don't care. I thought it was so well done. And man, am I happy I was on it when purchasing these items because everything was gone. In addition to the planners, it has stamps, no pad, no paper. I bought everything, everything. So that was a major purchase in October, November. That's why I probably didn't buy as much makeup because I was like, <laughs> it all went to Obonichi Decho but I just had to share because I forgot to mention that in the earlier months, but also probably should have mentioned it in my lifestyle favorites, but technically that wouldn't have made sense since I just started using it. So maybe that'll be in best of 2023 in a year. Let's continue on with the makeup, but I gotta, hold on. I gotta open up Luffy because I wrote down what I was gonna mention. Okay, okay, okay. Back to the makeup. I mentioned this, I think, in maybe a Black Friday video that I have on my member channel. The Benefit Java Blush. I bought this during their Black Friday event. I think they were doing 30% site wide. This color, I have it on the cheeks right now over the LYS cream contour or cream bronzer stand the higher standard cream contour stick bronzer stick in harmony i mentioned in my best of beauty that i although i gave it to house labs this is a fantastic product so if i were to separate the two yes best powder bronzer house labs best cream bronzer for sure lys i applied java on top this color i i don't know what to do myself it's just perfect the amount of toastiness it delivers is impeccable i could use it for blush purposes or a little bit of sculpting but if i want it a little more than what just brown can give me i can rely on java between java starla and Terra, if i buy any more blush anytime soon I'm an idiot because all my blush needs are met in terms of the color. And I know you could go peach, apricot, pink, bubblegum, pink, fuchsia, terracotta, brownie, like that's my jam. Summer, autumn, winter, spring. Okay, speaking of blush, I also bought the Hourglass palette into. This is customized, so usually you would find these shades in the Tiger palette if you bought it as is. I already have the Tiger palette housing palette one, which houses the more medium tones, and I have the more copper tones here on my face now. And what I was apprehensive about was the fact that this is more for deeper complected individuals, which I'm happy to see. The thing is, if I wanted to set anything, I would have to go back into palette one, but what I've been doing is just carrying around my Pat McGrath under eye setting powder and what I've been doing was setting my under eyes and not much of the rest of my face so I didn't mind bringing that extra item along and then I would use this color for bronzer and I would just mix these you know these are so beautifully smooth and again right on my alley look at that next to Java stop it I applied it here on the cheeks and I buffed it so that sheen would spread evenly and just leave behind that soft focus radiant finish. The highlighter here I applied on top. And the elephant design by Katie Scott is gorgeous as well. I'm happy I went with this and not with the butterflies. The butterflies are beautiful, but I think the tiger and the elephant are the most standout because since the butterflies are on the gold, which we've seen from Hourglass, to have a different colored background, I think was more unique for me. So Niji released her holiday sets this year, and it was the Mount Fuji brush and holder and the Traditions trio set. The Mount Fuji brush beautifully designed from the wood all the way to the persimmon dyed handle and the fluffiness factor I think is perfect but not so dense that you feel it will move product around so I go at length about this brush on my Sona G video if you want to head over there but I think it's fantastic that despite the fluffiness you still have predictability where you feel where the product is going and you're confident that it's going to have a beautiful final blend and it not spread out too far high or low and the tradition trio set I love the handles. It is the same wood that is found in the Kiyaki set, but what we have here now for the first time from Sonia G is the Canadian Squirrel. And these are just 
pleasantly soft, but they have feedback. So it's not so soft that you don't feel what's going on on the lids. It just has that perfect flow and fluidity on the skin. Great pickup of products. You can't use them with cream or liquids because these are quite delicate, but go ham on the powders, my goodness. Fantastic brushes. And I think a complete set for all one's eye needs, especially if you're a minimalist when it comes to eye brushes that you don't need five brushes for one look. You need one to place color on the lid, maybe another to buff through the crease, and another smaller brush for detail work, inner corner, lower lash line, and maybe a little bit of lining here on the lash. Allies of Skin. I mentioned Allies of Skin when I tried their vitamin C serum. Their 35% I tried last year, and then this year, or this past year, my goodness, the 20% I was not sure about how I would like it long term because of its sticky texture, but I learned to love it. And they were running their holiday event where they were doing like up to 50% off on their products. And I ran across their peptides and antioxidants firming daily treatment. This is their best seller from the line. It is expensive. That's why I never bought it. But when I saw that it was on sale, and I think I have not checked yet, maybe I should do that where they were running the subscription service where every two or three months or one month they'll send you the product and I think the sale price is locked in. I'm not, that might be a lie. Don't quote me on that. I thought I would take advantage at least for this one time. I have never, ever applied a moisturizer as creamy as this. I'm gonna do a little bit because this is like very expensive, but the texture is I look forward to moisturizing my face now because the experience of applying this just whipped, silky, creamy substance on my face puts a beautiful end to my skincare routine morning and night, especially on top of their vitamin C serum. It kind of like pulls the texture together where it's no longer tacky. Everything just sinks in and kind of sets in this perfectly placed satin type of a thing. I don't know how I would feel about this during the summertime. I think it will be fine. I will revisit those results when we get there. We got a little bit of time, but for the winter at least, in regards to the firming and the peptides, you know, that could all be a lie. The texture though is amazing. I'm sure, however, that there is something, something is contributing to my complexion in a positive way, much like how the vitamin C serum is. I know the jury is still out there in the skincare world, whether vitamin C is doing something or not. I do think it helped my blemishes tremendously, and I will show what my face was looking like back in June 2020. It was the worst it's ever been because of stress and me constantly picking and not keeping my hands off my face. It was probably all from all the masking as well. Now with me touching my face less. Now it still happens, but there's a little more control. And the fact that I have been using this routine, my skincare routine consistently for the last few months, that all I think helped me clear the hyperpigmentation significantly. And with the introduction of the vitamin C serum from Allies of Skin, in addition to me using my tretinoin and I introduced the peach and lily lactic acid serum, I think all those contributed to how my skin has been looking, how it's been behaving. And not to go TMI, but I also quit birth control back in March and I thought I was gonna have like an onslaught of of different hormonal changes and acne and all that and I'm happy to report that after a month I stopped taking oral contraceptive that my period returned in a month and we could talk about that in another video but I have to say you know with nutrition and lifestyle I think it helped me rebalance my hormones in a way that when I did get off birth control my skin didn't go haywire and with the help of all these different products not saying that they were the main cause but I think it does help to have products that your skin agrees with. They're fragrance free, which is fantastic. So it's been going very well. And a quick eczema update. So I don't have a picture and I hate that I didn't take pictures, but I'll put up a screenshot of how my arm was looking 
a few days back or maybe a few weeks back if I could find one. And I was going through the different uh, possibilities. And it's funny, when you go on Google, you know, what food sugar eczema, eggs and dairy, eggs and dairy. I'm like, that cannot be it, okay? My dairy is raw goat's milk. It's not the pasteurized stuff. So what I did was no longer have my cortados. And after five days of not having espresso and pasteurized half and half, my skin condition became significantly better. And it's crazy, sometimes it would just itch so bad that I could not resist the urge to just scratch. And then when it was really bad, like if I had honey or a fermented product, I don't think those products agree with me. Apparently they're high in histamines and some fruits and vegetables are high in salicylates, another plant compound that can trigger eczema. It would ooze and pus so bad, especially the one that I have on my left shin. That's the worst one out of all the patches that I have. It was crazy. I had to keep dabbing it and it will hurt and my showers had to be lukewarm and no more than five minutes because I just felt those regions of my skin kind of like burn. <laughs> it was really uncomfortable but what has helped me uh, skincare wise however was castor seed oil. This is black castor seed oil. I also have the huge castor seed oil and a mini one to travel with. This really helped in just lessening the severity of dryness to help resist the urge to itch. It was a topical treatment for those reasons. What really helped was eliminating the coffee but when it was bad and when I was trying to find some relief the castor seed oil tremendously helped and I kept using and I'm keeping on using it because I think it does make a difference in terms of my skin moisture and hydration also when I have to wash my hair and my skin is exposed to water longer than what it should I slap on castor oil first on my skin so it could act as a barrier and a little bit of a protectant against the water exposure since I'm in there more than five minutes. You know, I try to wash my hair as fast as I can, but you know, it's, I got a lot of hair, okay? So that has been helping and I know there are castor oil packs that you can do. I tried that once, but I don't think I did a very good job. So I have to do better research on how to execute that better. But yeah, this again, the black castor oil and the regular castor oil has been instrumental in my healing process. And lastly, I have to end with my God can't destroy streetwear. Luffy crew neck. This was an item I saw on the website and I was so bummed, so bummed that it sold out, but I happened to find it in a random retail store in Hong Kong. You know, when you search the internet hard enough, you can find what you need. It was still expensive though. It was on sale, but still expensive. I didn't care. I needed this piece. I ordered it in a small. You have half God Can Destroy Streetwear on one side, which is supreme feeling in the labeling and in the design, I get it. And on the other side, you have the Luffy face, but the sheer size of Luffy's face on the crew neck, I think is what stand out about the design and why I wanted it. One side is a slightly thicker fabric, like a different weave, and the other is slightly thinner. So there is a little bit of contrast in terms of the different material, but I like it, I don't care. I said the Luffy crew was the last thing to mention, but there is actually one more. I came across the Dark Shaper on Etsy, Federico, he's from Italy. I saw he had Portugal's de Ace um, merch things, and I saw the hat. I was actually looking for an Ace hat, but all the ones I came across were very cosplay leaning. They weren't realistic. It was love at first sight. I needed to have this piece and I'm so happy that I chose the more muted orange because Federico could have done it with the more vibrant orange, but he even said himself that the muted orange is just a little more realistic. And you can see the detailing here, the red beads around the hat, the happy and sad face on the front, the paint that's used, that vibrant blue and the silver, the rope down the sides and the, I don't know what it's called, but you see the big circle with like the, the skull on there and the bamboo shoot with the red fringe. It's so beautiful. And I know it might not be the most practical piece. It's a standard size hat, but the brooch thing is really heavy. So I did wear it out once and I felt pretty cool about it, but I can understand how one might not wear it often. I do think it's a collector's piece in my eyes and I might wear it out once in a while. And I think it's a great conversation starter, especially I have to wear my hair a little differently. I can't have the mound on. 
with the ace hat but i love running into these items and supporting artists like federico who have a passion for bringing these characters to life in items like a hat right if you are a hardcore ace fan I could understand the the pull and the desire to own this piece and I just had to have it. I think it's gorgeous and just you can't see it but I have it like hanging out behind me and you know with like I explained with my anime clothes and even like my Grogu dolls and all these things I like to collect and have and not necessarily use. There's just a magic about it in that it represents my love for something, my passion for something. Because I think we have so much, there. there is excess that I definitely contribute to with all the buying that I have done. It's nice to run into individuals who are artists and who create these items that you by buying you can support their work and also just have something that's special to you that you admire and that you love and you know me watching one piece and also reading it and to have this full-size live ace hat beyond and i have the ace sweater too so i'm gonna wear that hat with the ace sweater <laughs> it's a lot i know but I i'm just that person i don't care so that is it fam i think i included everything there's there might be some things missing but those are the biggies for december and i mentioned this several times in my best of videos that i'm looking forward to spend less in this new year and just embrace what I have already and we'll dive into that collection where I can bring you different tutorials maybe inspired by a lipstick color or a look I saw online maybe we can go back into the archives perhaps there'll be more get ready with me so let me know what your suggestions are down below and let me know what your favorites have been for December I will see you down in those comments fam and until then that is a wrap thank you all so much for watching I hope this video helped and if you like this video please give it a thumbs up or maybe consider subscribing to my channel. And until then I will see you on here again with another review tutorial, anime clones extravaganza or another faves roundup. Take care and I will see you again soon. There's this tonsil brush that my heartstrings pulled every time I think about it. So we're gonna spend less, dive into our collections more, and I'll also try to think outside the box because I know I'll be going against up a lot of new product videos as those will always be springing up on your YouTube feed. And I know YouTube loves that. So I have to think of a way where my content will still be uh, interesting enough for YouTube to suggest to the general audience. Let's see how that goes. But I think that challenges me as a creator to go back into my archives and maybe I'll be inspired by something I encountered that I haven't for a long time and that will then encourage me to create more content because uh, yeah, haven't seen this product in a while. Let's talk about it. And I would love to know your suggestions down below fam, what you would like to see for me and what you think will be interesting amidst all the new products. Yeah, and yeah, I'm not getting the Mario foundation. It looks gorgeous. It has nothing to do with me not thinking it's going to be great. But like I said in my best of beauty, I already have great foundations. Like I don't know how much better the Mario is going to be enough for me to buy it and have a full blown new bottle of foundation that I will then have to use. In addition to my House Labs and my NARS and my Danessa, my even my Lisa Eldridge. I know that wasn't a best of pick, but she's still in there. Didn't get the Rare Beauty highlighters either. I like the highlighter I have on now. So with that said, it has to be phenomenal at this point for me to get. And I'm just trying to have a better handle on my money <laughs> since I do spend a lot on food. Like I mentioned about my eggs that I get shipped here. Uh, corn and soy free eggs are not cheap, especially because you have to pay for the packaging. I also love to buy from North Star Bison. Okay, grass-fed, grass-finished bison. It's not cheap. Also, I love to shop from Patagonia. Their lemon or mussels, their anchovies. Again, not cheap. And also bought Bay two new steel pans from Meeson because, because he has two skillets that are just banged up. Don't want to cook on them anymore. I mean, they're terrible. Knives I don't cut, so I got him a chef's knife. So this is where my finances are going. <laughs> food and cookware, which is fine because I think it contributes to my lifestyle overall. And 
I'm already content with the makeup that I have, right? I don't think I need new more makeup. So I'm trying to shift my priorities financially and focus on the items that I do need that are going to contribute greatly to my health and lifestyle and be okay with the fact that you know, I love shopping. I know that high is outrageously like reward, feeling, whoa, can't live without it. But I have to put a halt on it because I can see in the future where to buy excess and to have excess where I have so much already, I'm looking at it, it's like glaring at me. I think I need to dive deeper and, you know, just use what I have for the new year and I'm excited for it. So let me know what your favorites have been, maybe items that you have not been spending on that are not makeup beauty related that have contributed positively to your life. I'll see you down in those comments. And until then, that is a wrap. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope this video helped. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up or maybe consider subscribing to my channel. And until then, I will see you in here again with another review tutorial. Obonichi Techo Extravaganza for a One Piece wardrobe runway show. Take care and I will see you again soon.